just a great day. So I, I also heard that uh, you had some visitors by your uh, station here uh, in, in the in the shape of uh, Girl Scouts. And they came by to uh, to uh, thank you. Uh, the Girl Scouts over the years have always been so good, supportive of us, and, and they treat us so well. It's uh, and they they're just another example of, of the kindness, caring, and generosity of the community. But uh, it, was, it was I'm sure everybody that was here at the time enjoyed seeing them. Oh yeah, it's 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 so nice when when they just stop in just to say hello. Yeah. you know they're not looking for a tour, they're not looking to earn a badge. They just come in and just give you the big thank you. Those are huge. Oh, well, we do look forward to to starting the tours up when we get through this. Oh my goodness, I know, I know, it's 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 awful. I I still get overload of boxes of plastic fire helmets at, at my station because we don't get to give them out anymore. You know, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> we'll so get it. we'll get there. Right. So let's see. Uh, we you you uh, had a couple of new officers start, and they sh are they all done with their uh, street training now? Yep, they're all, both on the road. Um, we so we have three newer officers. We yep. have Cody Normandon, Brittany Firth, and Nate Wright. Uh, they're all all out on the road and uh, and working. And uh, so from everything I'm hearing, they're doing a great job, and they're, they're they're a good fit for the organization too. And I and I trust as the community gets to know them. Uh, they'll fit right in. Oh, absolutely. They, they all, were, were they there beforehand? I know, you know, of course, Brittany being a, a dispatcher before I stole her from you. Yeah. Uh, right. you back. That's okay. We'll just train her and then you take her. Yeah, take her again. Sure. <laughs> uh, she did a great job in communications and uh, I'm sure she'll do a great job here. We're glad, glad to have her back uh, in our building. She, right. She was always part of our family, but uh, even when she, she headed east for a little while, but uh uh, we're glad to have her back. Yeah, she just needed a little fixer. They're just a little tweaking. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> so there was uh, a comment that we got here where a person um, says that they believe that officers get uh, special training to help people with autism. And I was wanting to speak about that because you know what? If somebody had asked me that, it would never cross my mind that, you know, like, that you would have that specialized training. And so if you could talk about any that that type of training you get and also any other kind of training that I personally wouldn't think about that you that you um, people would have. Sure. I mean, the autism training is, is outstanding. And all the instructors are people who are, it's near and dear to their heart where they have a loved one that is autistic and then they, they get the, the, the national training and then they go out and deliver it. You know, it, with, with uh, you know, you might have a 17-year-old autistic male who's 6'4", you know, and we've had them. We've had them, uh, autistic uh, members of the community, go into a bathroom with a knife. Okay. You know, what are we going to do? We're going to stall in the door? No. You know, so you sit back. But what the class teaches a lot of things that you might not know about, say, touch sensitivity, you know, how they don't want to be touched or sound sensitivity or uh, proximity. You know, some of these things trigger people with autism. You know, many, most, uh, many, many autistic, autistic people have a, are sensitive to sound. So hmm. controlling the environment, offering separation, listening, identifying triggers uh, for, by talking with the parents. Uh, one of the things we have here is a program that we started years ago uh, it's called a person at risk. And if you have someone who might be autistic or maybe has Alzheimer's, which is another topic we study, um, or any person that might be of risk in any way, uh, you know, um, people with uh, autism and Alzheimer's both elope, right? Which means they leave their home when people might not know. And we do find, we do find people wandering the street at night and that can be very dangerous, especially, you know, in New England in the winter. So, <clears throat> Uh, we offer this program where, where our family members can sign up. It's all confidential, but it gives the patrol officer in the field, uh, there's a series of questions like, are they touch sensitive, sound sensitive? Uh, do they have favorite places? So some may be attracted to water or like to go to the train station or will walk to a relative's house. And then it also offers a picture. Um, you know, in Hopkinton, you can, in the middle of the night, you're really looking for the person, right? <laughs> there is a person. Yeah. 
<laughs> right now walking on Grove Street at three in the morning, but uh, the picture is helpful. It is because sometimes they end up, you know, maybe down at uh, on West Main Street at a at a busy uh, a busy uh, place. Yeah. So that program helps us, but it is that diversity in training that really helps us. You know, that uh, it opens your mind, right? Um, right. You know, it, you know it, it also adds empathy. Uh, the more the more exposure you have. Um, you know, and I don't want to, Dr. C. Mercoli's book that I read at President in Town, you know, diversity, exposure to diversity brings empathy. And I agree with, I couldn't agree with him more. 